Trust, an equal opportunity service provider. The Treasure Valley's original all sports station. Sports Radio 95 3 FM and 1350 AM. The Ticket. Hope you guys have a wonderful and happy 4th of July weekend. Be safe out there. Bob Beeler in for Mike Prater today on Idaho Sports Talk. I'm Johnny Ballgame. Appreciate you guys. A lot of you traveling this weekend. Travel safely let's hit up that fat guys fresh deli hotline and welcome the 51st player selected in the 2020 nba draft one of the great boise state bronco basketball players in program history he's with the nbl in australia but now he's getting ready for some summer league guys welcome justinian jessup back to idaho sports top justinian you're all over the globe right now i bet you're happy to be getting ready for summer league welcome to Idaho Sports Talk. What's going on, man? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, def- yeah, have been over all over the globe <laughs> the last six months. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having me. I was waiting for that Australian accent, but you haven't picked it up, JJ. <laughs> no, none of that. <laughs> uh, I never will. I <laughs> love a, it. Not an accent master. <laughs> hey, talk about this. You know, you were drafted by the Warriors a couple of years ago. This will be, I believe, what? Your, is this your second? or third stint in summer league with them. Give us an update. What are you looking forward to showing what you can do now? How much better are you now than the last time you played summer league ball with the Warriors? Talk about that excitement level for you getting ready for a big NBA summer league. Yeah, uh, this is is my second go around. Last year was my first time. Uh, I'm just definitely looking forward to just getting out there and playing, you know, getting Back in the court, playing games, getting some live, live action, you know, showing that I'm a you know, better player than I was, you know, a year from uh, a year, yeah, a year ago from now. Um, just in all areas, I think just defensively, uh, more sharp on the offensive side as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm just ready to get out there and play a little bit, man. Just so. Just any, what do you know about the summer league this time that you didn't know last time that you think will help you? Uh, I think just kind of the dynamics of the whole thing. You know, it's a bunch of guys just getting together, never played together really. Um, all are trying to showcase, you know, what they can do to, you know, NBA teams or overseas teams, you know, everybody that's watching pretty much. And so it's just an interesting type of basketball, an interesting dynamic. And I think that going into that for my first year was like a little, uh, you know, difficult to adjust to, but I think this, time around it's been a little more familiar and comfortable uh, just with the practices so far so i'd probably say that's the biggest thing that i've adjusted to and what about the other summer league action are you playing with the warriors team that's competing in i think either the bay area or down in santa cruz on the first week yeah so we california classic is in san francisco and yeah i'll be playing we actually have two games uh tomorrow and sunday so i'll be playing in that Justinian Jessup with the Sex Boise State Bronco, a place in the NBL, that is the Australian League, and he's getting ready for a second stint as a Golden State Warrior Summer League player. What's your contract like? We've got questions on this, Justinian, with the Warriors. Like, did they have first right of refusal for you to play in their Summer League team? Are you still technically under contract or they own your rights? Put us up to speed everything contractually the relationship you have with the Warriors right now? Yeah, so 2020, I signed in Australia for two years. And then after I signed that contract, uh, I was drafted by the Warriors. So I'm technically not under contract with them. They just own my draft rights. So that pretty much means I can't go, you know, try out or go to training camp with any other NBA team besides them. But I can still sign, you know, a contractor deal somewhere else overseas um, if, you know, they don't invite me to training camp or whatever. So technically not under contract, you know, with the Warriors at all. Um, so, yeah, just that's just kind of work. They just have my rights pretty much. For how long, quickly, Justinian, how long do the Dubs have the rights to your uh, NBA professional basketball options? Uh, for, forever, as far okay. as I know. Um, yeah, until they waive or, you know, sign me, they're going to have my rights. Gotcha. Now, how is it trying to make a team that has a lot of talent? I mean, they won the whole thing. They've got a lot of talent, a lot of good people 
that are, you know, holding down roster spots. That's a tough challenge, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I can't really worry about, you know, who they got on their roster or um, which guys they're potentially looking to sign. You know, all I can do is just really control what I can control and try to perform well in these games and give myself the best chance of, you know, getting a spot. And then really the le- the rest is in, you know, the Lord's hands. So um, that's kind of just what I'm focused on the next couple of weeks is just doing what I can, you know, just uh, what I can control. As we look at uh, your development over the last two seasons in Australia, where do you think you've grown the most? Where have you improved the most? Where has your game taken off? Uh, I think just, you know, definitely defensively, I think I've improved in that area. Um, and then just, a, you know, the game's just, I feel like every year it just slows down for me more and more, you know. Um, mm. Just being able to read, make reads better, quicker, um, play against better athletes, um, make just making better decisions. You know, basketball is such a decision-making game. And, you know, I think that's kind of where I've improved a lot is just being able to make quicker decisions and better decisions uh, throughout the game. He's Justinian Jessup. He's on the Fat Guys Fresh Deli Hotline, Prater in the Ball Game, Idaho Sports Talk. What conversations have you had with Golden State Warrior coach Steve Kerr? Has he said, hey, we want you to do this or that. We're looking to see this or that. We hope to invite you to training camp. When's the last time you talked with Coach Kerr, and what was that like, Justinian? Yeah, I mean, there's really no communication with Coach Kerr, you know, for myself. Gotcha. Um, he's, yeah, I don't really talk to him, but I think there's definitely communication with uh, some of the front office guys and my agent, you know, and just what they want to see. And I think that's just, you know, kind of, you know, show what I can do in a certain role, which you means just hit shots and be able to, you know, hold my ground on defense and, uh, yeah, just do that, you know, because I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be coming in here and <laughs> being a, you know, taking 20 shots a game or being the star player, obviously. So sure. uh, they just want to see things that you know are going to complement the other pieces. Justinian, so the light at the end of the tunnel would be, you have a successful spring, I'm sorry, summer season, and they say, hey, come training camp in October, whenever it is, we want you to be with the Golden State Warriors with the hopes of making that team or possibly playing in the G League. Is that the light at the end of the tunnel? And is the G League, for you and your opinion, is that a better option than going back down to the Hawks in the NBA, NBL and playing another Australian season? Um, well, yeah, I think the light at the end of the tunnel is definitely hopefully get on a roster, um, get a roster spot. And, you know, I mean, I'm not going to be going back to Australia. That's for sure. Okay. Um, so if, you know, if it comes down to the G league or overseas in Europe somewhere, it just really depends on the situation, you know, like what's going to be best for my development, you know, what's, uh, the financials look like, um, just kind of all those things. So. You know, that's, that's still a few weeks away. Um, not trying to think about that too much, to be honest with you. Just kind of want to go in here and show what I can do and have a good time. Just Danny, we've had a chance to catch up with uh, Chandler, with Abu, and with Derek. And uh, now catching up with you, we really appreciate your time. Mm-hmm. What do you think it says about Boise State's program, Justinian, in that there's four guys in the NBA Summer League with four different teams? Yeah, no, I think that shows a lot about what Coach Rice has been doing these last, I mean, all those, you know, all of us are from the last, uh, you know, four or so years, you know, so obviously it's like the program is trending in the right direction. Um, Obviously with the NCAA appearance this past year as well. Um, And so hopefully they just, you know, continue to develop develop guys, you know, and find guys that, you know, want to work hard, want to take, you know, their game seriously and, you know, pursue a professional career like, uh, you know, those other guys you just mentioned have in the past. So um, I think it's a really exciting time for Boise State basketball. And I just hope, you know, the city continues to rally around the program and continues to support those guys. I haven't looked close enough at the schedule, so I don't know if Golden State plays Dallas, Atlanta, or Toronto. But uh, what would it be like playing somebody that was a former teammate of yours? Have you done that before? Uh, I don't think so not up to this point um you know obviously da was on my team last year for summer league um but you know i'm sure it'd be 
you know, for me, playing against friends is just, it makes it a lot easier to compete, you know? Um, Cause you know, at the end of the day, there's no hard feelings. It's just um, good, com- good competition, friendly competition. So, I mean, that'd be cool. Hopefully, you know, get a chance to do that. All those guys are wings. So um, probably we'll, would guard <laughs> one of them if we did end up playing. So yeah, hopefully it happens. Hey, Justinian, you said, uh, I'm not going back to Australia. That's for sure. Um, you just feel that it's the next step in your basketball journey to play in another league. Was there anything about the NBL that made you say, you know what, I I, I don't want to play in this league anymore? Uh, yeah, I think just the European leagues are going to be better for my development as a player right now. And I think that's kind of the stage I'm at in my career. It's, I still feel like I can really improve and expand my game and you know the coaching in europe is really high level it's really detailed and uh a very you know hot high level of intellect over there in terms of coaching and playing style so um yeah i think that those for those reasons you know just Mm -hmm. being able to develop more in europe is probably why i would go over there over in australia personally what's it like living and playing in another country and and does that factor in i mean like going to different countries and which ones you might be in or be, maybe some countries are easier to assimilate to than other countries uh, was it tough being away from the states yeah it was tough being away from the states for sure um but yeah i think you know the lifestyle and the uh you know i mean because you're going to be living there for you know pretty much half the year so yeah. it's kind of home and um but yeah i, I would say you know, that's, that is one great thing about Australia was the lifestyle and just the culture shock was, you know, a very minimal change from the United States, you know, um, <laughs> like it was, it was pretty sweet. You know, there's like five minute walk from the beach, all the, everybody speaks English down there. Everybody's super friendly. Um, all my teammates are really cool. So in terms of like the lifestyle, you know, Australia was amazing, especially coming out you know, my first couple of years in college, it made just that transition much, much easier. Yeah. I would imagine, you know, being able to live and play basketball in a place like Australia for a couple of years in your early twenties. I mean, those are memories you're going to have forever that you were able to <laughs> live in those cultures and do that. And I know that's going to be happy for a happy moment for you down the road. Justinian, we can't wait to watch the golden state warriors play some summer league ball. Uh, we want to see you play well and all your ex Boise state Broncos, uh, who are down there as well. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your time today. Let's, you know, I want you to shoot, let's shoot 54% from downtown on this <laughs> league, J- Justinian. Let's really get uh, after it. Appreciate you hanging out, uh, man. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks. Good luck, Justinian. All right. See you guys. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Bob, another one of your uh, your favorites, I'd yeah. imagine. You know, you called every one of his <laughs> games, too, in that career, and kind of an interesting four years with Boise State. They didn't get to the tournament in any of those years, but Justinian, DA, I mean, there's some good teams there, too. He was a guy, like, you just, you know, you look at the Boise State guys over the years that just got so much better. Okay. Uh, You know, you could say the same thing about Chandler, Derek, Mm -hmm. Abu. I mean, you just watch them get better. And and I think that, you know, again, we were talking with Chandler. You know, Justinian's probably 25 years old, something like that. So, you know, his prime spot, is still to come. So uh, good, good chance for a new challenge, uh, you know, in another country or maybe the G league. And I wish him well. I mean, I I think he's a guy that can do a lot of things and would be a nice piece off the bench for an NBA team. JP, did did he answer your contract questions there? Yes. That was very interesting that the warriors own his rights basically until they do something with them. Mm -hmm. They can sell his rights. They can trade his rights, I guess, uh, or they can sign him and, I I found that kind of interesting. You know, if they don't have any interest, if if they look at somebody and say that, I can't believe that they're going to hold him back from another team. I would think they would try to make a move, maybe get a second round pick or cash or Mm -hmm. whatever the deal would be. So I I don't think that's going to stop him from if if some other team wants him. I don't either. Good stuff. Again, that's Justinian Jessup uh, hanging out with us here on Idaho Sports Talk. Uh, good for Bob there making that sucker happen. The Idaho Steelheads. You guys hear about this? They have some uh, big news that they're going to announce next week. JP has some of the details. We'll get to that. And baseball with Bob. It's July 1st, 4th of July weekend. But 
It's also a special day for baseball fans. So I can't wait to see what Bob has for us in that regard. Coming up, I know Sports Talk. Bob's in for Prater. KTIK the ticket. This is Idaho Sports Talk with Prater in the Ballgame on Sports Radio 95.3 FM.